for you to walk in abundance, and I mean for you to be a commander of kingdom wealth, you must recognize that you must give God first place in your financial stewardship. Every giving towards the advancement of the kingdom endears you to the heart of God. God is saying to you, for you to escape the economic holocaust that very many are experiencing right now, you must put him first in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. Hallelujah. I welcome you to day two of the April edition of our week of spiritual emphasis. And this month shall be a month of all-round breakthroughs for you. It shall be a month of favor for you. It shall be a month of open doors for you. It shall be a month of supernatural turnaround for you. God will do something this month that will cause you to smile in Jesus' precious name. Before we go into our teaching again today, we shall be asking for help from the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege you've given to us to be called by your name. Thank you for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Father, we open our hearts to receive from you again this evening. Let your word come with power. Let it impact. Let it transform. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All the winners who shout aloud, Amen. We have stepped into a very great month loaded with blessings for all of us. And the prophetic focus of this month is financial fortune is my heritage. Let's echo that together. Financial fortune is my heritage. Say like someone that believes, financial fortune is my heritage and that shall be your portion in Jesus' precious name. The teaching series remains fundamentals of kingdom wealth. We are looking at part 1B of it today. Fundamentals of kingdom wealth. Fundamentals of kingdom wealth. Yesterday, we were able to establish that kingdom wealth is real. That means God has a plan for his church in this end time. God has ordained the end time church to operate in a higher level of glory. The Bible says, for the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. He has packaged his resources for those that will use it for the advancement of his kingdom and for the spread of the gospel of Christ. When God decorates men and women with his blessings, it is for them to channel it towards the advancement of his kingdom. We see that in the life of King David. David was so blessed that God used him to prepare everything that was needed for the building of the house of the Lord. Now, in Psalm 132, from verse 4 to 5, the Bible opens us up to the kind of things that were going on in the heart of David. Psalm 132 from verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. The king was dwelling in his house so blessed that he was always thinking of what to do to advance the kingdom of God. I remember in 2 Samuel chapter 2, 2 Samuel chapter 7 from verse 1, when David decided to build a house unto the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 7 from verse 1, he said, I'm dwelling in a house that is well decorated, paraphrased, and the ark of the Lord is still under tents. Then he sent for the prophet, prophet Nathan, and told him what he had planned to do. And the prophet said, do all that is in thy heart. He was always thinking of what to do for the advancement of the kingdom. And that was a king that God had used to subdue all the nations around him. But after he stepped into a place of wealth and power, he was thinking about God. First Chronicles 29 and verse 3, the Bible says, moreover, David is still speaking here. Because I've set my affection to the house of my God, 
I have of my own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that are prepared for the holy house. I have set my affection to the house of God. God will always put resources in the hands of those that will use it for the advancement of his kingdom. So for everyone that wants to be supernaturally blessed, this is the way you need to condition your heart. This is just the mindset you need to have for God to locate you as someone he will use for the expansion, for the advancement, and for the growth of his kingdom. Now, that's why we need to know from scriptures the things we must do to qualify us to be commanders of God's resources. Now, remember, we said in our last teaching as well, that is giving God first place in your stewardship is what empowers us to flourish in hard times. Giving God first place, making God number one in all your financial considerations. Giving God first place in your financial stewardship. That means when money comes into your hand, the first thing you must think is, Lord, what do you want me to do with this money? How do I channel these resources? There are some people, the moment money comes into their hands, even when the Holy Ghost is speaking to them, they will say, no, I bind you, Satan. Because they feel that whatever is coming to their spirit when money has entered their hand is an attempt by the devil to rob them of what God has put there. But I believe God for you that the grace to respond to every prompting of the Holy Spirit this month shall rest upon you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when there was famine in the land, in 2 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13, 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 13 down to 15, a man of God stepped into the life of a widow and opened her up to the principles of the kingdom. There was lack, there was scarcity in the land. People were just scrambling to survive. And the Bible says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did it many days. Now there's something to pick from this encounter. The moment a man of God stepped into the life of the widow as led by the Holy Spirit, he showed her what to do based on the principles of the kingdom. Remember, he was a representative of God. And he taught her what to do to provoke the hand of God. Make for me first. Every time money comes into your hand, the Holy Ghost is saying to you this month, make for me first. Allow me to be the first person you consider before you spend any money. And that's why Jesus said, seek ye first. God will never occupy the second place in the heart of any mortal man. It is either he takes the first place or he will walk away. Everything about God is clearly defined in scriptures. Make for me first. I know you've been struggling financially. But all this while you've been trying to make things happen based on your sense knowledge. And for all these years, your condition has remained the same. God in his mercy stepping into your life this month. You need to adjust. You need to change the way you have been operating. You need to open your heart for the Holy Ghost to guide you and direct you on how to channel resources. God cannot be on your side and you'll be struggling financially. When the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. You have struggled enough. I pray for you that this month, my God, shall bail you out in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I said, the Lord shall bail you out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The God of heaven shall bail you out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, by the grace of God, something happened based on this principle that I understood from scriptures, that in all your considerations, God must be first. There is a property, a house that God gave to us somewhere in one location. Then during the spread of the church last year, my wife and I had a plan to renovate the place. And anytime we are on vacation, we move into that place and enjoy our lives. But I got a call from someone that some pastors had arrived that location and that they were looking for accommodation. They were looking for a place to plant the church, and I mean Winner's Chapel. I already had a plan of what to do, but the Holy Ghost said to me, make for me first. Allow me to stay in that house. Then I will see to it that you will not need that kind of house in your life forever. Thank God for grace. Thank God for the help of the Holy Spirit. The church was planted there. The church has been growing. And shortly after that, God opened a door of favor that has made it impossible for me to ever need that house again. You see, most of us struggle when the Holy Spirit gives us instruction, not knowing that every instruction he gives to you is the pathway to your turnaround. When Peter was struggling, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 to 6, he said, Master, we have toiled all night, but we caught nothing. And Jesus told him, cast your net into the deep. And the Bible says, when he did that, he had a net-breaking catch. But something very striking happened in that scripture. He said, we have toiled all night, but caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. Anytime God wants to bail you out of any situation, he speaks to you. Anytime God wants to bring you out of struggles in any area, any department, or any aspect of your life, he speaks to you. And I'm sure he has been speaking to you. All you need to do is to step out. Until you take the step of faith, you can't see the power of God. Until you take the step of faith, you can't see the power of God. So grace to respond to every instruction he's been bringing your way. Receive it afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are demands for guaranteed rewards on our seeds sown. What are those demands? What are those demands? What are the demands that will see to it or that will ensure that you receive harvest from every seed you've sown? Because the scriptures cannot be broken. In Genesis 8.22, the Bible says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold, heat, winter, and summer, day and night shall not cease. So when we sow, it's natural for us to expect harvest. What are the demands for guaranteed rewards on a seed sown? Number one, we must recognize that God does not need us for anything, but we need him for everything. God does not need us. Neither does he need what we have. <laughs> God does not need us for anything, but we need him for everything. Now, Jesus painted a picture of the relationship between man and God in the book of John chapter 15, from verse 1 down to 2, then I take verse 5. John 15, from verse 1 down to 2. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Now, verse 4, he says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Now, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, but he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Just like the seed is worthless without soil. Or electrical appliances without power. No matter how sophisticated your gadgets may be, without power source, they are useless. And then as spirit beings here on earth, God has configured us to need oxygen. 
God does not need oxygen in heaven. It is only man that needs oxygen to stay alive here on earth. That's how it is. Without God, we can do nothing. The Bible records the account of a man who did not understand this about God. The Bible calls this man the rich fool. The account is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 12 from verse 16 to 20. This man was so blessed of the Lord. And he ran into one big temptation that many people fall into today. He forgot the source of his blessing. He began to say to himself, I've laid up much goods for many years. I don't need to work again. Just like somebody who is a businessman has established different branches of his business in different parts of the world. I mean, the profit is so huge and massive that he has chosen to relax. But he forgot the source of the blessing. And then God disconnected him from the land of the living. In Luke 12 and verse 20, hear what the Lord said. But God said unto him when he was boasting, Thou fool, <laughs> this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided this night? Yes, you are holding the money in your hand. Oh, you are boasting because of your fat bank accounts. But there is something that God has and owns that you don't have control over. And that is your life. He's the owner of your life. So this man was beating his chest and was boasting. I am so wealthy that even if I don't walk all the days of my life, nothing will be missing, nothing will be broken. And God said, no problems. I'm not going to touch your bank account. I'm not going to touch your cars. I won't touch your wonderful, beautiful houses. Then he just disconnected him from the land of the living. It's like sitting in a room, walking to the switchboard, and switching off the light. And the Lord said, let me see whose those things shall be that you have provided for yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we must always recognize that there is nothing we have, there is nothing we will ever have that God will need. Everything we are enjoying today, they all came as blessings from him. In Psalm 50, from verse 10 down to 13, God says, for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills, <laughs> they all belong to me. That's what he's saying to you. Every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills, they belong to me. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls? Or drink the blood of goats? The answer is no. Now the Bible says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows to the Most High. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. In Haggai chapter 2, from verse 7 down to 8, the scripture says, And I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, all the natural resources on the face of the earth, they belong to me, said the Lord of hosts. So we must recognize that there is nothing God needs from us. When you're dropping your tithes, you're dropping your offerings, consider it a privilege. First of all, it came from God. I'm only using it to honor the Lord. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So every time I sow a seed, I've come to honor the Lord. I've come to give him thanks. I've come to give him praise for lavishing his blessings on me. That's the right attitude you must have. Don't say no, if I don't give seeds in this church, the church will not advance. No, before we are born, the church has been advancing. When you finish your assignment here on earth and depart to heaven by his grace, the church will keep advancing. There is nothing you have, there is nothing you will ever have that God will need. We are all privileged stewards. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now, if thou did receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? 
Glory be to God. If you didn't receive it, why are you boasting as if you have not received it? Now, Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, can bank his money anywhere. And whenever there is need, he can take money from any place, anywhere under heaven. I'm talking about the king that can take money from the mouth of a fish. He has banks in the ocean. And then <laughs> the fish can vomit anything, anytime. Matthew 17 and verse 27. Jesus said, notwithstanding, lest we offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. So he can pick anything from anywhere. So whatever God has blessed you with, remain thankful, remain grateful. Whenever he makes a demand on you, give to him with joy, give with excitement, give to him cheerfully. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be small today, but you will not die small. I know you're going through some challenges and maybe you're wondering, Pastor, do you know the financial difficulties I'm facing? Oh, Winner's Chapel is blessed already. Do I even need to put anything there? No. It is the seed you sow that determines the harvest you receive. That's why you must keep sowing to the Lord and you must keep sowing towards the advancement of his kingdom. You must keep giving to the Lord. You must keep giving to the Lord. And you must keep sowing towards the advancement of your kingdom. I see God changing your story in the name of Jesus Christ. I see God changing your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what are the demands that guarantees returns on our seed sown? Number two, we must sow our seed in faith. We must sow our seed in faith. Everything in this kingdom operates by faith. A man of God defined faith as your sixth sense. Now, another great man of God defined it as your response to the spoken word of God. That is, acting in line with the word of God that you have received. That is faith. There are many people that hear powerful teachings in the church, but they have never taken actions in line with the things they've heard. They don't have faith. They don't believe. In Hebrews chapter 11, we see how some great men of faith responded to the instructions that the Lord gave to them. Hebrews 11, I read from verse 4 to 6. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Now, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Faith is acting in line with the word of God that you have received to provoke the miracle you desire. When you go to your doctor, if you're having health challenges, and then he gives you your medication, your tablet, or your prescription, as the case may be. When you get back home, it is expected of you to take your tablet as prescribed by your doctor. Now, the moment you take the tablet and put in your mouth, you have expressed your confidence in the things that the doctor told you will happen to you when you do what he has told you to do. So that shows you have faith in your doctor. A farmer also demonstrates faith. For instance, it's farming season around here at the moment, and a good number of people are rushing down to their various farms, planting their seeds, because they know that while the earth remains seed time and harvest, <laughs> shall not cease. No matter how beautiful the quality of seeds you may have may be, if you don't go to the farm to plant your seed when it is harvest time, <laughs> 
you will suffer hunger and starvation. So that goes to show that a farmer that goes to the farm to plant his seed has faith in the law of seed time and harvest time. So anytime you're planting your seed, you must have faith that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he has told you has the ability to do, he will do. When he told Abraham that at the fullness of time, his wife will conceive and bring forth a child, at the fullness of time, it happened. In Genesis 21, from verse 1 down to 2, the Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived and brought forth the child unto Abraham according to the word that the Lord had spoken to him. And Sarah said, Who had thought that Sarah would conceive and bring forth the child? That God has made me to laugh, and those that hear will laugh with me. It is acting in line with the word that you have heard. God has been saying a lot of things to you concerning your finances. Every time you go to pray, oh God, when will I come out of this phase of financial struggle? There are thoughts that flood your heart. There are instructions the Holy Spirit has been giving to you. But sometimes you will think it's the devil that is speaking to you. No, it's not the devil. Satan will never tell you to give. There are things that the devil will never tell you to do. Number one, Satan will never tell you to pray. Jesus is the one that said pray. <laughs> without ceasing. Men ought to pray always and not faint. Then Paul said, pray without ceasing. Satan will never tell you to give. The devil is selfish. God is the one that has that character of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Satan will never allow you to walk in love. God is love. He that loveth not knows not God. He will never allow you to pray. He will never allow you to give. He will not allow you to walk in love. He will not allow you to forgive. So anytime you hear that voice telling you to give, it's not the devil speaking to you. It's not the devil. When you look at the life of Abraham, you see how he operated in faith. When God told him to give his son, his only begotten son, there's something to learn from this verse of scripture. When Abraham offered Isaac, the Bible says he saw him in a figure. That means he saw God giving back his son to him. Hebrews 11 and verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. What do I mean by that? With the eyes of the spirit. Abraham so believed God that he knew that even if I slaughter this boy and butcher him into bits and pieces, the power of God can put him back together in one piece and God will hand him over to me. He saw him in a figure. What does that mean? He was seen with the eyes of the spirit. Just like you can be in the church sanctuary, then with the eyes of your mind, you can travel to your sitting room. With the eyes of your mind, you can travel to your kitchen. With the eyes of your mind, you can move to your office. You are sitting in a particular place. But with the eyes of your mind, you can still visit different locations and places. That's how faith works. So when you have faith in what God has told you, you are not seeing your immediate position. You are not seeing your current status. You are seeing what God can do in your life. So I may be struggling right now. But whatever God has told me to do, I can see with the eyes of my spirit that that is what is required of me for him to move me to where he's taking me to. Get excited. Your case is not closed. The same principle applies in healing. <laughs> the same principle applies to financial prosperity. The same principle applies to your marriage. All that must work in this kingdom. Of course, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now lift your hand above your head. I pray for you. The grace to respond to all the instructions you have been receiving from the Lord comes on you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to respond to every instruction that God has been giving to you comes on you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. For it is God that works in us both to will and to do. The grace to step out in obedience the grace to sow that seed, the grace to plant that seed, the grace to let go of those things the Lord has been showing to you. Receive it afresh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive it afresh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
receive it afresh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I share this testimony with us as we attempt to round off. In 2016, during one of the prophetic seasons, we were reaching out to souls in one densely populated location. And as we were reaching out to souls, the Lord was giving us great harvest of men and women. As they began to come to church, the Lord led me to be using my own private vehicle to add to the vehicles of the other members of the team to bring people to church. Something very interesting happened. As we kept on going to bring the people, the number was also growing. We got to a point that the private vehicles we were using to bring people to church could no longer meet the needs that we had. So the Lord led my family to buy a bus for that location. As at that time, the vehicle I was driving needed attention, but I obeyed the Lord because I could see with the eyes of faith that if I buy this vehicle, which will be used to bring people to church, I will never need vehicles in my life for mission operation anymore. Well, by the grace of God, I was able to procure the vehicle. We bought the vehicle and give to the members of our, our group to be bringing people to church. The following year, God changed my status. God put me in a position that I can buy that same kind of boss right now, and I mean more than 30 of it at the snap of a finger. When I was sowing that seed to buy a boss, Satan was whispering into my ears, oh, why don't you use this money to change your own personal car first? Can't you see that the car you're even driving is not as good as the one you want to buy? But when God begins to walk in you and gives you grace, it becomes very easy for you to respond. To the glory of God, that vehicle was bought. And I know that that step of obedience opened the door to a new phase of glory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So I know somebody may be looking at me right now and you're wondering, Pastor, you don't even know my situation. You're just talking like that. You're so blessed that you even have so much reserve that you can buy a vehicle for the church. Well, that was my level then. Maybe you're still at the realm where you're struggling with rent, possibly struggling to feed, thinking of how to pay tuition. Children will soon go back to school. Now, the Holy Spirit will be showing you what you need to lay down for him to step into your affairs. Man may not be able to help you, but God is always willing to help you. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit. God is ready. God is willing. God is eager. Or maybe somebody may be wondering, oh, Pastor, but we have been doing these things you are saying right now for years. Nothing has changed. Please don't use the words of your mouth to destroy your seed. Sometimes when you begin to complain about the seeds you have sown, you're using your mouth to destroy the seed. It's just like pouring herbicides on plants. The moment you do that, you have destroyed the whole seeds or the crops you have planted. So please be careful. God is never late. When your cloud is full, the rain will fall. And I see that rain falling for you this season in the name of Jesus Christ. This shall be your season of heavy rainfall. Rainfall of financial favor. Rainfall of financial open doors. Rainfall of promotion. Rainfall of lifting. Rainfall of turnaround. God will cause men and women to remember you from a far country. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, we must have a genuine love for God and his kingdom. Everything that is not love motivated in this kingdom does not attract any reward. We must have genuine love for God. What is the love of God? It means the God-first lifestyle. The love of God means the, the God-first lifestyle. The God-first lifestyle. The love of God means the God-first lifestyle. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. What is the love of God? It means kingdom addiction lifestyle. It means kingdom addiction lifestyle. 
Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing do I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, and uh, behold the beauty of the Lord in his holy temple. Psalm 27 and verse 4. One thing do I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Glory to God. Kingdom addiction. That scripture is paraphrased. It means kingdom addiction lifestyle. What is the love of God? It means living to make others live. It means living to make others live. Jesus said in Matthew 22 and verse 39, and the second is like unto the first, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. God first lifestyle. Kingdom addiction lifestyle, it means living to make others live. Living to make others live. In 1998, I met the Lord on the 11th of January, 1998. I had a very concrete plan of what to do with my life. After my first degree and our national service, I had a 15-year plan of what to do with my life. By the grace of God, I had laid down some goals that would run for the next 15 years. I was to go back to school and study medicine and surgery. And then after that, travel to the United States of America, specialized there, and come back to my country and create jobs, build private hospitals, and employ people. I had planned to partner with some of the people I would have met out there in the US, then come back and that was meant to be my own contribution to my own generation. But when I got arrested by the Holy Spirit, I understood that life is not all about what I want to do, but about what God wants to do with my life. So I had to abandon all the plans and began to think of how God can use my life to touch other lives. So I surrendered to his call upon my life. And by the grace of God, I've had the privilege of being used of God to witness to people, to plant the seeds of the word of God in the hearts of men. I've had the privilege of serving as a missionary in West Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, North and South America, and today in East Africa. Why? The love of God consumed my heart. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I live now is no longer my own, but I live by faith in the love of God and of Christ, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 and verse 20. So the love of God consumed my heart. Life is no longer about what I can do for myself. I'm always thinking of how can God use me to impact lives? How can God use me to mold destinies? How can God use me to put a smile on the faces of others? That is what has consumed my heart, and that is what I'll be living for until Jesus returns. So we must understand that for our seeds to produce, number one, we must recognize that there is nothing we have that God needs. Number two, we must sow by faith. And number three, everything we are doing must be motivated by love. If your step of faith is not motivated by love, it will not work. For faith, work it by love. I believe that this season, God will move you to greater levels of glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I said in this month of April, God will be giving you testimonies that shall not be denied in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said this month, my God will move you from where you are to where he has appointed you to be in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now let's rise again this evening and lift our hands above our head and give him all the thanks for the word we have received. Let's say, Father, thank you for your word you have brought my way. Thank you for the great things you have packaged and prepared for me this month. Thank you because this month shall be my month of advancement, shall be my month of glory, shall be my month of increase, shall be my month of multiplication. I give you all the thanks, I give you all the glory. For the path of the just man is as the shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Thank you because I'm changing levels this month. Blessed be your name, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Quickly, before we partake of the communion this evening, I want to pray for someone who is not born again. Yes, you've been watching this service. Wherever you are, you know you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Allow me to pray for you very quickly. Now, place your right hand on your chest and say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you died for my sins. 
wash away my sins with your precious blood. Write my name in your book of life. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan to serve you, the living God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Now you pray that prayer with me. Just lift your right hand above your head as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you. For no man can say Jesus is Lord except it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. For everyone you've drawn into your kingdom this evening, uphold them by your power to we'll meet with you face to face in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' precious name. Now, the communion tonight shall bring healing to your body. It will restore your mind. It will bring restoration to every aspect of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whosoever eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood abides in me and I in him. John 6 and verse 56. Number two, the communion will open your spiritual eyes. The Bible says in Luke 24 and verse 45, and then opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So the Holy Spirit will open your understanding to know the steps you need to take to bring about your financial turnaround. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I pronounce this. The flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Father, as we partake of this communion today, let your healing power flow into the body of everyone that is afflicted with sickness and disease. Flush out every stranger in their bodies and take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. By this same mystery, open the understanding of everyone, show them the steps to take for their turnaround, and your name alone shall be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And all the winners who shout aloud, Amen. So we partake of the communion and rejoice in Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father. Now give him all the praise, give him glory, give him honor, give him all adoration. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my deliverance. Thank you for my restoration. Now by the leading of the Holy Spirit, place your right hand on your forehead for everyone hurting in any part of his or her body. I stand by the authority in the name that is above every name. I command every sickness and disease in your body out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I take authority over you and I bind your powers. I cast you out of their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, let your power flow from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Thank you for healing them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Something has happened to your body right now. Check yourself very well. You discover that that pain is no longer there. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So as we close, take these very important instructions. Number one, I would want you to locate and read these books, Breaking Financial Hardship by Dr. David Oedipo. And secondly, Understanding Financial Prosperity. Please feed your faith and starve your doubt. Some of the things I've shared with you this evening, I caught light from these books that I've just mentioned. And I'll be sharing more about sacrifice tomorrow knowing what to do for God to grant you instant, and I mean speedy, quick turnaround. And then for counseling and prayer, you can reach us on the numbers and the email address displayed on the screen. We are here, God has positioned us to be a part of your joy, and we do everything that he enables us to do to ensure that your growth and spiritual development are speedy and rapid. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Don't forget, Tomorrow at the same time, we shall be having another session of anointed blessing from heaven. And your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' precious name. So we share the goodness in fellowship, everybody. Come on, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>